I, I um, decided to do a word processor. Not that I really knew what a word processor was. I just wanted to do some juicy project um, using the BBC. And I thought, um, you know, it wasn't really practical on an Acorn Atom with 2K of memory, but with 8K of memory, um, it, was, it was possible. Um, and uh, I just thought it would be useful to do, uh, to have a utility like a word processor. I didn't really know what they were at the time. They were dedicated machines. You could spend twenty thousand pounds and buy this desk-sized unit, which had a built-in printer and a VDU and a keyboard, and that's what that's what word processors were at the time. Um, and um, I just developed what I thought a word processor should be. You know, the basic text editing abilities and cut, copy, paste, and rearranging, and word count, and later spell checking, and those sort of things. We sold it, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that it was, we, we sold it into education because the BBC Micro was in education, but it was a general purpose uh, word processor and therefore appealed a, across the board. Um, and, you know, very large proportion of our customers were just general enthusiasts who had bought the BBC Micro. I mean, everything, journalists were using it. It wasn't really, uh, you know, solely an education machine. I remember, in fact, even Stephen Fry, his very first autobiography, he told me later um, that he wrote it on WordWise. Um, because it was well, it just happened to be one of the first available word processors that actually did what you needed and it wasn't expensive. All of a sudden, because of the popularity of the BBC Micro, and we just started selling ridiculous amounts of stuff. Um, and so I became you know, wealthy enough to go and buy a, a hundred moon mansion when I was 23, I think it was. Uh, really pretty much on the result of um, uh, being in the right place at the right time and, and, and doing stuff that people wanted. The BBC Micro was instrumental in everything in my entire career. Uh, my company was built on what became, you know, the BBC Micro. Um, so uh, even the stuff that we do today, I can look back and, you know, look at back the whole, my whole career and the whole business started 40 years ago from the BBC Micro. So. Uh, it was everything to me um, uh, and it was just an interesting what started just as a geeky hobby you know became my business and my career uh, as all built on that um, I think it's interesting when when you you look back is there were people who were um, uh, Sinclair uh, uh, fans and they got the ZX80 and the 81 and the Sinclair Spectrum and part of the UK computing industry looks back on the Sinclair side or on the Acorn side. And when you, when you meet people, quite a lot of them say, oh yes, I had an early BBC Micro and that's how I learned programming. And then half of them say, oh no, I had a Sinclair Spectrum and that's how I learned programming. And so I'm, I'm always a, 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 on the Acorn side. Um, and so it's a, it's a perfect example of being in the right place at the right time and doing something that you are interested in. I had a passion for it um, and uh, my business grew out of that. Uh, uh, and it's an example of um, uh, where I believe people should follow what their interest is and not necessarily look at the commercial side of it. As I say, if I had focused entirely on the commercial aspect, I would be writing software for IBM PCs. Um, but I didn't. I, was, I did what I was interested. And so um, I've always regarded it as my hobby. Um, it's not really a career. It's, it's, it's become a career, but it was always, always my hobby. Um, and um, I've always been interested in, in technology and, and that's why the BBC was just such a big thing um, at the time in the, uh, in the early 80s.